Collectively, we are uh, here in Sydney, Australia, the Apostolic Faith Restoration Church. And of course, our, uh, I'll just put this there, uh, registration, the registration for our church comes under the Word of Faith Ministries, which is a missionary uh, purpose, and we go wherever the Lord provides for us to go, usually Philippines and then wherever else we are led. We thank you very much for our Facebook viewers. Glory to God. And over here uh, we're recording uh, for the uh, YouTube viewers, which is about 8,000. And uh, the Facebook is growing because we just started doing that. And... Um, we're excited because we know the word is going forth and uh, people are changing, people are learning and uh, regardless of what a person's background is, I mean my, my background would, would be Catholic, you know, when I was a four year old I went to a Catholic school and I stayed there until I was time to leave so um but you know i got filled with the holy ghost glory to god hallelujah and that's what we need today we need the power of the holy ghost and that's not to make you look good talking in tongues or the gifts of the holy spirit to impress people no that power of the holy ghost is to give you power to overcome sins of the flesh the problems in the world and of course the devil who is the God of this world in 2nd Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 4 it says that the God of this world tries to stop you from seeing the light of the glorious gospel and he is the God of this world and uh, he was cast out of heaven and to, to earth and when he was cast out heaven into earth, he could appear to anybody as an upright being. So it's just like uh, you entertain, if the Bible says you can entertain angel, angels unawares because sometimes the angel can look exactly like you or me. Uh, an angel means messenger and uh, Lucifer is a fallen angel, he becomes Satan. And you know, 
I think it's not preached enough that Lucifer that became Satan, and Satan means gossiper. I don't know whether you know that today, but Satan, the the origin of the word comes from the word gossip or gossiper. And uh, you know, the greatest way of Satanizing is gossiping. Yeah, he's a gossiper and he'll cause you to gossip. If you're a victim of Satanizing, then you gossiper, you know, and that's what he does. And right now, there's never been a more time in history that the destructive gossip is getting around the YouTube. You know, YouTube, they do a good job. But there's some people that destroy what is good, and they call it God. You know that? And the Bible warns us against that, that what beware of people that call the bad things good and they call the good things bad you know they try and twist it and I know that some of the young blokes they used to say oh wicked you know as meaning good but you know they don't realize they're falling right into the snares of the devil you know I mean they don't mean to it's a bit of fun but our words are life or death you know proverbs 18 21 says death and life are in the power of your tongue and you shall eat the fruit thereof so you know when we say ah wicked you know it's just a thing that we go through it's he, 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 satan wants you to fall into these snares and uh my son's looking at me thinking we don't do that anymore yeah. it's, it's old-fashioned yeah, now old -fashioned. But you know, it's out there, you see. Uh, the word that I preach today is spirit and life, and it's permanently going through the spiritual realm, you know. Jesus said, my words are spirit and they are life, you know. And they, he said, it, 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 Isaiah 55, 11 says, the word of God goes forth and shall not return void or empty, in other words, it's still going, right? The word of God is still going. He said, my words are spirit and life. But what are Satan's words? Spirit and death, you know? Death and life are in the power of your tongue and you shall eat the fruit thereof. And as people still eating the fruit of, wow, wicked, you know? Because there's wicked people out there. And they don't know, they think it's, they think it's cool to wear a witch's hat and go, yeah, <laughs> all this sort of thing, you know. And it's really just playing into the hands of the devil. And it starts off as a joke or a bit of fun, but later on it gets into some serious stuff that, you know, destroy people's lives. I've actually seen people in a seance you know, gather around a table and they get these wooji boards and they somebody's moving the glass, you know, you're pushing, no, you're pushing, no, you're pushing. And all of a sudden they take the hand off and the thing moves by itself. They don't tell me that's not evil. That is, you know, the wooji board is the co connection between you and satanic forces. And, uh, you know, there's evil in the world that is very real and uh, so we have to be careful especially this time of the year when there's been Halloween Woo you think that was just a bit of fun well I tell you what if you check out uh, some of the fun that they had there was people that was cursed from it people that died from it eventually and you know these things they're just there and we are not to be ignorant of the devil's devices. The word of God says, do not be ignorant of the devil's devices. And I'm certainly not ignorant. I let it go because I know people, they just want a bit of fun. But, you know, it's time to wake up to yourself and 
have a look at what the Word of God is saying. I'm not preaching on that today. Not preaching on Halloween or anything like that. What I am preaching on today is uh, the next stage that we go through. We've been preaching on uh, petitioning God in prayer. Some of our prayers have been religious over the years and uh, we just say them because they're written there after all, you know, somebody writes them down and uh, you can may say, uh, Hail Mary and the glory be and uh, uh, how Father, all them prayers, they're all good prayer, I mean, let's face it, they, they're prayers that, they, that move people with compassion and I, I like prayers like that, that move people. But I also want it to be scriptural. I want it to be what God says, you know. And um, there's nowhere in scripture that says that the Hail Mary is full of, full of grace, yes, but not uh, full of God, you know, not a mediator. There's, it actually says in Timothy that there's no mediator between God and man other than Jesus Christ. So Mary was full of grace when she received Jesus. And, uh, but after that, I mean, she, she became uh, married and she, Jesus had brothers and sisters, you know. I mean, so she was immaculate conception. It was immaculate conception when she had Jesus, which is... Uh, Coming up to Christmas now where we remember Jesus, the Saviour of the world. And they'll portray Jesus in a, in a uh, major, you know, and uh, there'll be three wise men or whatever, you know, uh, around and all of that. Well, that was Jesus when he was born. But by the time the, the, what we call the wise men, there was not just three, there was a caravan, in the Bible says so there's a caravan of men, and the three of them that came forth, um, with one with uh, frankincense and incense and, uh, and myrrh, you know, in other words, they had three gifts that they gave to Jesus, um, and blessed him financially and with uh, with provisions that would last uh, probably into his uh, later years. And um, but by the time that happened, Jesus was two years old and living in a house. Okay, the Bible says that he was two years old and living in a house, not in a major anymore not in a stables anymore you know that's religion that tells you that but the bible tells you that by the time they blessed him and they came and they found him he was two years old living in the house that's why when the the pharaoh of the day um, and they heard there's going to be a king and take his place he, that's what he thought he said go and kill every child up to two years old. Why two years old? Because that's how long it, it, it took the, um, the, uh, the shepherds and the, the wise men, that were, you know, to, that's how long it took to find Jesus after he was born. And so, uh, you know, because as you read, you read in the scriptures that um, uh, God sent a messenger to wake up Joseph and says, "Wake up from here and flee to to uh, to, to uh, Jerusalem." So you know that's why they call uh, Jesus of uh, fled to Nazareth. That's why they call Jesus of Nazareth because that's where he fled to. He born in Bethlehem, but fled to Nazareth. And you'll see. But by the time these that he was blessed with frankincense and, and, and myrrh and, and, and the three gifts that he was given but uh, 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 that was when he was two years old living in a house so 
this Christmas when you see the manger and all of that that's when he was born that's fine but all the other things that go on at that time uh, Jesus was two years old living in the house okay so I don't know how I got on to that we want to follow up on the petitioning of our prayers glory to God you know we want a light on that camera over there because <laughs> I, I forget that you know Facebook is going on and so we thank you for our Facebook viewers who have said that they are blessed with the messages that's wonderful and uh, so I'm going to collect my thoughts together and Joshua is going to come and uh, and tell us the direction we're going in now is Thanksgiving so if you've been watching our videos your petitioning God in prayer should tell you how to make some kind of petition to God and so as you petition God you have your prayer request and we presume that you've presented yourself to God um, as a living sacrifice and be not conformed to this world but be you transformed as you renew your mind with the word of God so we pray that you've done that and now you're petitioning God in prayer you've wrote down what you want and now we're giving thanks to God is that right so Joshua is going to show us how to give thanks to God hello my name is Joshua Brown Richards today I'm going to be reading two um, scriptures in the Bible um, two chapters um, remember to like comment and subscribe if you're on Vimeo daily motion or whatever if you're on YouTube after subscribing press the notification bell and you'll be notified of every time we upload a video. Um, you can also subscribe to Dad's mailing list at rarefryingrichards.com.au. Okay. Psalm 100 and King James Version. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know you that the Lord he is God. It's he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. And Psalms 118, King James Version. I will give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, because his mercy endureth forever. Let Israel now say that his mercy endureth forever. Let the house of Aaron now say that his mercy endureth forever. Let them that fear the Lord say that his mercy endureth forever. I called upon the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a large place. And the Lord is on my side. I will not fear what man can do unto me. The Lord taketh my part with them that help me. Therefore shall I see my desire upon them that hate me. It's better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It's better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. All nations can pass me about, but in the name of the Lord will I destroy them. They can pass me about, yet yeah, they can pass me about, but in the name of the Lord I will destroy them. They can pass me about like bees. They are quenched as the fire of thorns. For the name of the Lord I will destroy them. Thou hast thrust sore at me that I might fall. But the Lord helped me. The Lord is my strength and song, and it's become my salvation. The voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tabernacles of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord doeth valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord doeth valiantly. I shall not die, but live, and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord hath chastised me sore, but he hath not given me over unto death. Open to me the gates of righteousness. I will go into them, and I will praise the Lord. This gate of the Lord, into which the righteous shall enter. I will praise thee, for thou hast heard me, and hast become my salvation. The stone which the builders refused is become the headstone of the corner. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvellous in our eyes. This is the day which the Lord has made. 
We will rejoice and be glad in it. Save now, I beseech thee, O Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, send now prosperity. Blessed be he that cometh in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you out of the house of the Lord. God is the Lord, which hath showed us light. Bind the sacrifice of cords, even unto the horns of the altar. Thou art my God, and I will praise thee. Thou art my God, I will exalt thee. I will give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Okay. That one I'll come up. Okay, just, um, just before we go any further, I just want to tell you that uh, what um, we've been sharing the last couple of weeks on the uh, petitioning God in prayer, we have uh, a written format there that we've been doing on Tuesday nights, Bible studies, uh, through Zoom. And anybody who on our mailing list, we, we send them uh, the Zoom contact, and you can do that with us. Uh, and we send you this um, as our format of, uh, of uh, petitioning God in prayer. And so we, we're moving on now from that to the Thanksgiving part. Um, so the, there's about 20 scriptures in petitioning God in prayer. Then there's about uh, 10, 15 scriptures or something uh, in Thanksgiving. So today we're going into Thanksgiving and praise, mm -hmm. and, and that takes faith. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, you, you, it says faith is a substance of things um, not seen. Thanks, uh, faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things that are not seen. So therefore, you, you give thanks to God for receiving what you cannot see. But you're giving thanks by faith, and then you will see it, you know. Uh, so that's how it works. And a lot of people think we're crazy, you know, because they don't understand how faith works. But that's what it is, is you believe you receive when you pray. Mm -hmm. Don't see any different, you know. Yeah. You believe I receive when you pray. And if you give thanks that I thank you, Lord, that I've received it, that's when you'll count more. Amen. Right. Okay. So we're going to get into the mode now of thanksgiving. And uh, Elinette's going to come and sing us a song and, and, and stir up the gift that abides within. Amen. Amen. Let's go. Lord, you are our strength when I'm weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my own and own.
fresh pain Rising again, I bless your name You are my all in all When I fall down, you pick me up When I'm dry, you feel my cup You are my all in all It's nice, isn't it, to have music. I just bang the guitar and hope for the best, but you got music. I see people reading music here, and it's foreign to me. But, um, you know, I had, in Tasmania, I had a, uh, a church that was pioneering in Tasmania, um, and I had this lovely Filipino girl, no, no, I'm sorry, not Filipino, um, New Zealand, uh, Maori, Maori girl, and she comes up and she says, I, um, I have to go, um, we're going to uh, New Zealand again, um, I have to go. I thought, well, when do you be back? She said, oh, I might not come back at all. Uh, she said, I, I'm a Maori after all. And I said, but you're a guitarist, you're the only musician, what are we going to do? She says, well, I'll tell you what, she says, that's D, and this is A, and that's G, and she says, if you don't have your two fingers across there, you can do a bit of that, and uh, the top and the bottom there, and it comes out the same, the sound's the same, it's G. And I thought, so you mean to say, well, and she said, and I'll leave you the guitar. And she left me the guitar and the way I've been singing since. So, you know, that's how I started to play guitar. And that's the only uh, lesson I ever had, you see. So God is in control. And that's all I learned was G-A-G. Uh, and I've seen musicians, they sat there on their chairs and they looked at me and go, what? <laughs> they can hear other things other than DAG. And they says, Brian, you play guitar and you make it sound just the same as everybody else who plays a guitar. <laughs> and uh, I said, well, I've never had a lesson. It's the Holy Ghost playing through me, <laughs> all right? And, uh, you know, it's just by the grace of God that we can do what we do. And mm -hmm. we, we thank you for nice um, comments um, because... Really, it is God who works through us. We, we are not professional people. That's what I'm trying to say. We're not professional people. We're not perfect. But what God has done in us is a perfect work. Amen. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we don't claim to be perfect. But what God has done is perfect. Mm -hmm. And uh, I really appreciate God for what he does continuous with us. And, uh, you know, I've heard, <laughs> I've heard the argument that, well, we're only sinners after all. But the Bible never says that. That's a little bit of religion, you know, that you, we're only sinners after all, we're saved by grace. Now, we are saved by grace, yes, but we're not sinners. We who were sinners are now saved by grace. That's what the Bible says. You see that? So if you think that you are a sinner, you will sin again because that's what you believe of yourself, that you're a sinner, you will definitely sin again. Mm. And because the devil will make sure you will sin again because you're a sinner after all, you know. 
But my way of thinking is, yes, I, he who were sinners, I now saved by grace. In other words, God changed us to become something else. And you know, you're thinking, well, what did he change me to become? Well, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5.17 that you are a brand new creature that never lived before. It's 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, uh, any man be in Christ is a new creation, a new creature, a new creation. Old things have passed away and all things become new. And so you're a brand new species of being that never lived before. That's according to the literal Greek, uh, the literal Greek meaning of being born again is that you have never lived before and you have a new, you're a new creature on the inside. The outward appearance look the same, but the inner workings where God can use is brand new. So you're brand new. You're a brand new species that never lived before. And uh, your inners is of God. That's your soul has not passed by this place ever before. And uh, you're brand new. And if you can tap into that spiritual realm of your newness in life, in Christ Jesus, then you you will not call yourself a sinner. You will know that it's by the grace of God that we are here and that we can do and say what we do. Hallelujah! Can you imagine that? <laughs> it wasn't me. It was somebody else. You know, and that's what Paul says a lot of the time. You know, Paul was Saul. Saul of Tarsus, you know, and he was a chief of, he knows that he was the chiefest of sinners. And God changed his name, you know. Uh, a lot of people, God has changed their name, not only in biblical times, but even now in today's times. I mean, Paul Youngie Cho, for instance, that we've been called him Paul Youngie Cho for many years. Now we call him David. Excuse me? Yes. God changed his name to David. David Youngie Cho. You know, and uh, at first when I thought I heard all that, I thought, well, that's, you know. But it does say in the book of Acts, that in the later days that God will restore again the tabernacles of David, glory to God. And so, we, our body is a tabernacle. We are the tabernacle that holds God. You know, Jesus Christ came in the, in the flesh and dwelled among us. And he left us and he said a comforter would come meaning another one of the same will come and you shall receive power hallelujah say power. power you shall receive power of the holy ghost in acts 1 8 it says that you sh receive power from on high and uh, this power is not to make you look good in a crowd or to speak in tongues or gifts of the holy spirit no this power is to give you the power to overcome the workings of the devil. Yeah. You know? Because the enemy is the lust of the eyes and the lust of the flesh and the pride of men. That is the basis of all sin. And if you've got power to overcome that, you need power to overcome that. And that's what the power of the Holy Spirit is for. All right. Now we're here today to give thanks. Glory to God, you're here. You, you heard from uh, Joshua, uh, Joshua 118, and then in Psalm 100, 100, talks about thanksgiving, giving thanks. Um, and the more we give thanks for what we have, what we pray for in the petitioning God in prayer, we give thanks that we have received that, that we petition God for. We give thanks. 
Glory to God. We're giving thanks. And, uh, and so, as we give thanks, uh, so we come from Psalm 118, Psalm 100, and Thanksgiving, and in Romans 1, 8, turn to there, Romans chapter 1, and verse 8, it says that first of all, first, first, I thank my God through our Lord Jesus Christ for you all that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. Isn't that good, you know, when your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. In other words, we all got the same faith, we're all saying the same things. You know, when we're unified in the Spirit of God, it, God blesses unity. And God, it says, uh, Psalm 133, I think it is, uh, that God blesses unity of the brethren that dwell together in unity. God blesses brethren that dwell together in unity. And I can be in union with brothers and sisters in, in London, brothers and sisters in America, and brothers and sisters in Africa and India, and Australia and all over the world if you are a brother or sister in Christ we all say in the same thing because of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ isn't that good <laughs> so first of all I'll give you thanks through um, thank you my God through the Lord Jesus Christ in all that are spoken of in throughout the whole world for God is my witness whom I serve with the spirit in the gospel of his son that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayer making request if by any means now at length I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come unto you for I long to see you, that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift to the end that you be established. Isn't that a wonderful thing? I desire the same thing, that I would visit the people on my main end list. And I desire to be with you, that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift to the end that you be established. Not that I am anything in myself, but greater is he within me than he that is of the world, 1 John 4, 4, and that I can impart unto you grace. And that's what the Apostle Paul said, that be a partaker of my grace. That's what he said. Be a partaker of my grace. See, God's grace comes on you by faith, you receive it but once you receive it you've got it forever it's the gift of God and that grace will keep you from falling yes. into the temptations of the world from the lust of the flesh lust of the eyes and the pride of man remember that the basis of all sin is that and uh, if you have the grace of God you have ability in God. Remember we talk about grace, what grace was, God's righteousness at Christ's expense and God gives you ability mm. and you receive it and you receive it not because you deserve it. So grace is unwarranted, unmerited Amen. favor of God and you didn't do anything to earn it yes. but he gave it to you anyway. Yeah. Okay? Amen. It's godly grace that is on you. Yeah. It's godly grace that is on me. Amen. That I can impart to another. See, that grace is the anointing that will go right through you. And that grace is the same grace that we lay hands on the sick and they recover. Glory to God. How? I don't know how. Yeah. <laughs> but I just obedient to the word of God that says, 
lay hands on the sick and pray call upon the elders of the church and anoint with oil and pray there's so many different ways of praying and that's what we do we're petitioning God in prayer and people get that life changing experience through knowing Jesus and the word of one say that with me Jesus, Jesus and the word are one in the beginning was the word the word was with God the word was God and that word became flesh manifest as Jesus Christ and is still with us today because it says in Hebrews 10 that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday today and forever so he's forever with us if he's not in bodily form mm -hmm. he's in spiritual form and as you receive Jesus spirit you become a member of the body of Christ Amen. glory to God and you can lay hands on the sick in Jesus yes. name Amen. as if Jesus did it yes. Jesus is living and active within your flesh and your flesh is becomes of Jesus and as you lay hands by faith you receive the anointing to goes into you from my body to your body will touch you and heal your body cleanse your mind raise the sickness of the dead hallelujah not Amen. the sickness raise the life of the dead and raise the the, uh, the bodies that have died many people have died through this COVID-19 and I believe that this virus is just the same as any other virus we can overcome it mm. we can pray for people and see them healed glory to God AIDS coming the whole world thought this AIDS was a terrible the most worst thing you could ever imagine but people are getting healed from AIDS now the big C, the cancer, everybody was frightened about cancer. People are getting healed now. You see, it's this and this virus is just another thing that will come and be gone. Unheard of within another couple of years, you know? Be why? Because we learn how to overcome these things. Amen. We overcome them by faith. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Yes. And I believe, my, well, my testimony is today that I've overcome many things mm. that they said is a killer disease. I have overcome many things. It take me too long to, to tell you everything that I overcome. But I overcome the, the cancer of the, of the bowels, the cancer of the, the prostate, the cancer that was killing me is no longer killing me there's no sign of it anymore and uh, i prayed for other people that had the the big c the cancer in some place or other and they got healed the same throat cancer bowel cancer prostate cancer and you know some of it you can see some of it you can't see but god has healed that person and no longer are they going to die you know and there's many that have said they had terminally ill and now they're perfectly well mm -hmm. and so Jesus Christ is the same yesterday today and forever and we should give him thanks for it glory yes. to God mm -hmm. you know if you don't need any of these prayers of for cancer just give thanks to God that you don't need that prayer mm -hmm. glory to God you know, give thanks in advance, even for the things that you haven't got, because some of the things you don't want anyway. All right. You know, you can pray for a million dollars, but the million dollars won't get you healed. All right? And you can pray for healing, and uh, that the healing will not give you prosperity. So there are certain ways we should pray for the things that we need from God and that's called petitioning God but in all things we should give thanks Amen. and not forget to give thanks Amen. my wife will tell you about the, the lepers see you know see God gives revelation of different parts of the Bible and you get a revelation and a quickening a quickening in that and when you get the revelation and the quickening it comes alive in you and you sort of 
you have knowledge, revelation knowledge, that the giving of thanks is important. Mm. You know, ten lepers, was it? Ten mm. lepers that came to Jesus, one went back you, and said to Jesus, thank you for your prayers, thank you for your instructions. We went to the priest, he, he, he granted us absolution and says, yes, you can go amongst the people now. Because you they used to isolate the same, clearly the same with this uh, pandemic, this covenant, they isolate you because they don't know what to do with you. Yes. You know, we're always hearing about people being isolated from the rest of the people. We don't hear the, about the healing though. Mm. You know, they don't tell us what to do other than isolate yourself. Yes. You know. Mm. Um, so, you know, 10 lepers came to Jesus and he said, well, okay he prayed for them and then he said go to the high priest and they will tell you what to do you know mm. and he gave them absolution he said okay you can go amongst the people but only one came back to thank jesus he said well where's the others he said i don't know about the others mate but i'm here to give you thanks i'm here to give you thanks and he says your faith has made you whole now what did he say that for it's because leprosy you actually lose body parts yes yeah. You know, fingers fall off, yeah. noses, and all that sort Skin. of thing. You know. Skin actually falls away, and you never get that coming back again. Mm. But with Jesus, he said to the man that came back, he says, your faith has made you whole. Amen. Because you give thanks. He was important to him to give thanks. Yes. And we made whole means whole. What body parts he lost? is made whole now yes. only one out of ten gives thanks mm -hmm. how many people today do you know that get healed and they give thanks to god they give they forget you know they go to god and they say oh help 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 you know and they yeah. cry out and god miraculously helps them along the way through their healing mm -hmm. but when they're healed they don't even attend church yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, I mean, this is the important part. And I would say to me, it's the most important part. If you don't give thanks, yes. then, you know, it could come back on you. Yes. The, thing, the thing that left you could come back on yes. you. I mean, there is scriptures that say, you know, uh, repent and uh, don't do it again, or a worse thing could come on you. Well... There you Amen. go. So, it's important to give thanks. Yeah. I say it's important to give thanks. Glory yeah. to God. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. It's important to give thanks. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 4 says that it's important to give thanks. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 4 he says, I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace. See that word again. For the grace of God which is given you by Jesus Christ. That in everything. See that? In everything. In everything we are enriched by him in all utterance and in all knowledge. Even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you. Yeah. Yeah so that you come behind in no gift mm. you know what i mean you come behind in no you know all gifts yes you know we don't all have all gifts but if you desire a particular gift like i did when i needed that guitar to make a certain noise you know i mean i i no, i've never played a guitar in my life and she said this is d a g bye bye i'm going and she went off to new zealand i'm left with the guitar i was like lord please have mercy on me you know and uh, i just thought well that's d that's a -G. and i played everything in d a g whether it was supposed to be or not you know and uh, that's great and so, you know, we get by, glory to God. 
And you know, I started a church with a tambourine. Never had any musicians or anything. Started a church with a tambourine and I thought to myself, I wonder if I could do that. You know, I was I, I, I'm too afraid to have a go. But when I did have a go, I didn't, I forgot to tell them I can't play. You know? I forgot to tell them that I can't play, I'm only no DAG. And they said, nothing. And I thought, well, if they say nothing, that means they must have received something, you know. And uh, little did I know, they were singing along with the song, and they, they forgot to tell me whether I could play or not, you know. So I did that for a few weeks, until in the end I told them, look, I don't know how to play this thing, it's just D-A-G. Yeah. And they said, well, it sounds fine to us. And they're still saying it's fine. Yeah. So, and there's a few couple of years gone by now. Okay. They in everything you are enriched by him. And uh, one Corinthians, where am I? So, lost me away. One Corinthians one four, and then I read down to about six. It says so that you can be behind in no gift, waiting for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall also confirm you t unto the end, that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful to whom you are called unto the, the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Now I beseech you, I beg of you, he says, I beseech you, means I beg of you, brethren, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you. See, what starts divisions is that you speak something different to everybody else. Mm. See that? Jesus Christ, in all who speak the same thing, that there be no divisions among you, and that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. You see that? We all judge. We're told not to, but we all have to discern, because we are allowed to, to, to discern. And it says, with the same judgment that you judge, you'll be judged by it. Amen. Well, when you discern, you discern the Lord's body correctly. That's the first judgment. Discerning the Lord's body. And yourself. When we have communion, you judge yourself, so you don't be judged later on. And so, with the same judgment or discernment, you discern everything else. Sometimes, it's not correct. Sometimes it's not correct. And so we need to be corrected. If we can't correct ourselves, we need to be corrected by somebody else. So we should humble ourselves to receive correction. And if we do that, we're going to be blessed. Amen. Okay. So that's the Word of God goes on to say all that. I'm trying to be quick here. Uh, Philippians chapter 1 and verse uh, 3. Philippians chapter 1 and verse 3. Philippians chapter 1 and verse 3 says, I thank my God. There it is again, giving thanks. It's everywhere, all the way through the Bible. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, for you all making requests with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now being confident of this very thing that he which begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of jesus christ even as it is meat that word meat is an old english word which means able so everywhere you see meat, you say able. So even as it is able for me to think this of you all, then I have you in my heart. I have you in my heart. Inasmuch as in my bonds, so inasmuch as in as both in my bonds 
and in the defense and the confirmation of the gospel, you all are partakers of my grace. Whose grace? See that? It, it says partakers of my grace. But it's all that grace comes from God, but he's saying that it's his now. It's a gift of grace that you receive. It's your gift. It's your grace. Now you have to impart to others. Yeah. And you impart to others through the word of God, yeah. through the correction of yeah. God, yeah. and that by your grace you can heal somebody else. Yes. See, now when this is the, the thing that gives you confidence to lay hands on the sick and believe that they're going to be healed, because yeah. they are going to be healed, if you know that it's, you have got the ability, you have got the grace of God on your life, and you can impart to others. And that grace, we, I believe that the grace of God is the ability to do what you cannot do yourself. Mm. That's the grace of God. But it's also much more than that. It's not only the ability to do what you cannot do yourself, it's the ability to do that that is impossible to the normal man. Mm, yes. You know, it's God meeting their need. It's yes. God in you that will yes. meet their need. Greater is Amen. he that is in you than he that is of the world. Yes. And as you impart to others yes. the grace of God, you impart healing and deliverance. Yes. Whatever the need, believe that God's going to do it. Amen. I've said to people something, I don't know how it's going to happen, but God's going to do it somehow. Yes. You know? i got faith in that God is going to do it and he's going to use you you know and sometimes he'll cost you everything you've got just for the test because the devil is going to test you and say well you know god said it do you believe it you know the devil will say that and it caused somebody to say it you know and you know that's the devil's talking through some carnal people yeah god said this are you going to do it you know give all your money away you know are you going to do all this, you know? And uh, they'll tempt you. You'd be tempted to be disobedient. You'd be tempted yes. to hold on. But as you give in faith, believing Amen. that it's God, yes. then you have a supernatural abundance. Amen. I was up in Brisbane one time. Yes. I was in a minister's conference where this man says, of course, if you've got faith to keep the tithe, give the rest. Oh, what? I had a, a close to a thousand dollars in my pocket at the time, and uh, I kept the tithe and I gave the rest. You know? mm -hmm. And um, by the time, I mean, that was a Friday, I think, and on the Sunday I had to get on the plane to go, go to the Philippines. Mm -hmm. And uh, I actually read my ticket wrongly. I got there at 11 o'clock in the morning, it was 11 o'clock at night, the plane had to leave. So I thought, what am I going to do? I, you know, I've come from Tari, from the country town, to, to the Sydney airport. I'm thinking, well, I can't go back, you know. I'm going to have to hang around all day until 11 o'clock at night to get the plane. So what did I do? I went to a church, and the church recognized me as a man of God, and they said, would you like to preach today? I said, yeah. And I preached, they gave me $3,000. <laughs> See that? And I went to Philippines with $3,000. So that was a test, just a, a small test. I, I thought it was a test, like as if I give my life, you know. And but it was only a small test because later on, I mean, that was a, a long time ago. I've been tested many, many times since then, and I know that sometimes you give everything you got, believing in God. But if you're in faith, you've got the grace and the ability yes, to is. go yes, that extra mile. You know, yes. go that extra mile and receive the blessing of God. Because the blessing of God is far better than what you've got in your pocket. Amen. The blessing of God is far better than your, where you're living now. Yes. The blessing of God is far better yes. than whatever you have now. And if God tells you to give it, it's not to so you're going to be down and out and be miserable. It's because God wants to lift you up yes. to a better life 
than what you have now. Now I'm talking to somebody out there, I don't know who it is, but they're struggling with the thing that God has told them to do. And if you be obedient, God's going to bless you exceedingly and abundantly, far more than you could hope or think. That's what the Bible says. Hallelujah. So Amen. God is telling you to do something that is a big thing. He's struggling with it. I understand the struggle, but if you be obedient, God is going to bless you exceedingly and abundantly, far more than you yes. hope or think. Yes. Hallelujah. So, for God is my record, how greatly I long after you all in my bowels of Jesus Christ. And this I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more in the knowledge and in all judgment, that you may approve things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offence until the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, Yes. which are by Jesus Christ mm -hmm. unto the glory say glory, glory. unto the glory hallelujah we're going to have to preach on glory one time mm -hmm. because have a revelation of what glory yes. is hallelujah mm -hmm. and the praise of God but I would I but I would you should understand brethren that the things which have happened unto me have fallen out rather unto the fervence of the gospel so that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all and the place and in all other places now this was Paul he was in bonds he was in chains in in uh, in jail waiting to be sentenced and uh, I know this <laughs> <laughs> I, know. I experienced this in the Philippines as many people waiting, they, they're not judged yet, they're waiting for the magistrate to make up the mind what he should do with them. They may have stole a loaf of bread or they might have been homeless or whatever and they swoop the streets and they put them in jail. And some of them don't deserve to be there in jail, others they are yeah. criminals and they are in jail. Yeah. Some repent and some don't. But I, I, I can tell you this, that while you're waiting to be judged, is a far greater punishment yeah. than it would be if you were sentenced to a couple of years and you think, oh, well, no. But while you're waiting, it worketh repentance. And here was Paul in jail. It was working repentance in him, thinking, well, maybe I could have done things differently. I wouldn't have ended up in jail, you know. And God did warn him, actually, saying, don't go. And he did go to a place where he, didn't, he shouldn't have gone, and he ended up getting locked up. And he's probably thinking all this in his mind, that maybe I shouldn't have done this, maybe I shouldn't have done it. But it didn't matter. He was there for preaching of the gospel when he's told not to, and he ended up in jail. So... Now he's saying that I long to be with you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gifts at the end. That you be, that's why he couldn't be there because he was in jail. But here's him rejoicing the fact that he's got messengers coming in and out of jail and that we got the gospel today because of his diligence in the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And many of my brethren in the Lord waxing confident in my bonds. See that? In his, in his chains, in his bonds. Uh, are much more bold to speak the word of God without fear. Some indeed preach Christ even to, of envy and strife and some also of goodwill. The one preach Christ of contention, not sincerely, but supposing to add affliction to my bonds. Yeah? But as others, they preach, uh, but others of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. What then? Notwithstanding every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached, 
and I therein do rejoice, yea, rejoice, yea, and will rejoice, for I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayers, and that the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, according to my earnest expect expectation and my hope that in nothing I am not ashamed, not ashamed, see, he's not ashamed of anything, but that with all boldness and as always, so now also Christ be magnified in my body, whether it be to life or it be to death. For to me, to live in Christ and to die is gain. But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet what I shall choose, whether I should choose life or death. <laughs> He's saying that maybe he's got a choice here. For if I am in a, a straight betwixt, I'm a, a bit um, undecided whether I should be blessed, bless you, or whether I, I'm more blessed to be with the Lord. Because I'm, I, I don't know what to pray, whether I should be free or whether I should be with the Lord. You see, he's not sure. But then he goes on to say that it's more beneficial for me to be with the Lord, but it's more beneficial for you that I should be released, that I can be a blessing to you. And he says, nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. And having this confidence, I know that I shall abide and continue with you all for your fervence and the joy of faith, that your rejoicing may be more abundant in Jesus Christ. But for me, by my coming to you again, I've been locked up for, for what we believe. And in some countries, even today, They've been locked up for what they believe or what they preach and uh, some even uh, are dying the same way that uh, Paul. Uh, and so we should, whether we live or whether we die, I remember as one particular time that I was travelling through Ningen, what we call the Ningen Flats, and uh, I had the uh, uh, I had no choice to, to of, of what I, whether I could go one way or the other because I was low on diesel, I had a diesel vehicle at the time and I used to sleep in the back of it, travel, preach the gospel, sleep in the back and this particular time I run out of diesel, I couldn't go forward, I couldn't go back I had to wait until the flood ceased and it was rising, the flood was rising, the flood was rising and I had no control over it, I said to the Lord, raise my hands in the little vehicle that I had, and I said, Lord, whether I die in this flood, I'm with you. If I live, I live on to preach the gospel. So whether I live or whether I die, I'm with you anyway, so I'm going to, by faith, I'm going to go to sleep. And I went to sleep, and I slept a good sleep for about three or four hours or something, and uh, I slept really good and I woke up with the noise of this truck rushing through the, the water and uh, I just got up and leaned over the driver's seat and I switched on the hazard light and this hazard light was going blinking under the water because the water had risen that far and uh, it hadn't gone in the, the, where I was sleeping the water was all around me while I was asleep and I didn't even know and I just put on the hazard light the water was blinking underneath the water and if I hadn't put on the hazard lights and if they wasn't working that truck would have wiped me out and uh, he's seen these hazard lights and he stopped and we're both standing in the water and he said to me what can I do for you 
I uh, said, well, mate, I've run out of diesel. I, I have to, I'm sorry, if I'm in your way, I'm sorry. He said, I will have to go around, you know. He said, but I think the road is wide enough to, for me to go around you. And he says, I'll give you diesel. And as I go around you, you must follow me. And uh, I'm thinking that if I had been driving any other kind of vehicle, that motor wouldn't have started. But the motor was on, under the driving seat and it's away from the flood. And it started and I followed that truck out of the, the flood waters. And it's just by the grace of God, you know, that I, I lived through it all to tell the story and I thank God for it. I'm going to close there, but it's just by the grace of God that we can do these things. It's by the grace of God that I tell the be a witness of that grace. And you know, I've got many other scriptures that talk about the thanksgiving and the grace of God, the ability of God. I close there for this week. We'll come back to it next week. Heavenly Father, I thank you for that. Thank you for that. And uh, um, we've gone for an hour now, and I'm sorry, it's just gone over time. And uh, I pray, Lord God, that you just use this testimony to bring many people to know Jesus. And maybe somebody there who's been listening to me today who's never asked Jesus to be their Lord and Saviour. They never asked Jesus to come into their life. Would they consider now and say this prayer with me? Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, I believe in Jesus. I believe in Jesus. I believe Jesus died for me. I believe Jesus died for me. And rose again from the dead. And rose again from the dead. I ask him to be my Lord. I ask you to be my Lord. And my Saviour. And my Saviour. My healer. My healer. And my deliverer. And my deliverer. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. And be help me to be born again. And help me to be born again. I believe I receive. I believe and I receive. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I receive Amen. forgiveness. I receive, I, re the forgiveness. I receive healing. I receive healing. And I receive the power. And I receive the power of the Holy Spirit. Of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now if you said that prayer for the first time, or if you said that prayer and you haven't said it for a long time, but you said it today, I'd like to hear from you so I can bless you with uh, some literature, uh, one of my books, uh, and uh, all my books would tell you that Romans chapter 10, 9 and 10, which you've just said, that you shall be saved. But you need to be baptized. So you find a pastor that will baptize you in Jesus' name for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. I pray that Jesus. I know that you will never save me in my weaknesses. I know that you have come now, even if to write upon my heart.